Proceedings Act of 1947, which came into force on 1st January 1948, the Crown can now be sued in England for the talk of his servants. Mr. President, the king at the material time of the state at the material time was your excellency. If that was the law, that was the law. I Thank did not much. make the law. Thank you very much. All right? Thank you. And today, if I believe that the king never can never do wrong, I wouldn't be here. Thank you very much, Mr. All President. Right. Thank you very much. Mr. President, have a look at... So, uh, and I believe that law is dynamic. I agree with you. If in 19... Uh, what year are we 1977. Talking? If in 1977... There are parts of our law that colonial. Then today, maybe we need to amend them if we haven't amended them. In fact, Mr. President, I want to, at this juncture, commend Your Excellency for setting up this commission of inquiry. Which I don't need to. Powers? I don't need to be commended. Which? Now you do your job. <laughs> now I am doing my job as I believe I should do it. Thank you very much. Do yours as you should. Thank do you very it. much. Right. Will you agree that it was? A compensation for the job well done. I will not agree because, uh, because I will not agree because I wouldn't have been the one that, to that's recommend him. That's uh, an insult uh, to the judiciary. And well, yes, not, and I, I, I will want to say that not only to the judiciary but also to me. And I will not please uh, uh, your the honourable commissioner uh, commission. I will not stand here and be insulted because if you say that, then you say that I'm bribing. And I will not take kindly to that. M Mr. President. And please, please, and Honorable Commission, if you cannot give defense that I believe is necessary, then, then I will have to reconsider my stand in this witness box. I what? will not subject myself to be insulted, no matter by who. Mr. President, you have already answered the question. We, we don't need... In this historic episode of Oputa Panel, the star witness is none other than the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief Olushegun Matthew Akikiola Aremu Obasanjo. His appearance at the panel was historic as he was the only living ex-Nigerian military head of state who honored the tribunal's summons and presented himself for questioning and cross-examination. At the time of this proceeding, he was the current president of Nigeria. Chief Olushegun Obasanjo was born March 5, 1937 in Ibogun Olaogun, a village in southwest Nigeria. He is a retired military officer and a statesman who served as Nigerian military head of state from 1976 to 1979 and later as its democratically elected president from 1999 to 2007. In this episode, the Kuti family, led by Beko Ransom Kuti, a Nigerian physician, human rights activist, and brother to the late great Afrobeat maestro Fela Anikolakbo Kuti. His petition borders on the gross human rights violation meted out to his family in 1977 when soldiers under the orders of Tiwai Danjuma, the then chief of army staff, stormed his brother Fela Kuti's nightclub, destroyed his medical clinic, and killed his mother. Olushegun Obasanjo was the military head of state at that time. Beko Ransom Kuti is being represented by an undaunted Femi Falano, while Obasanjo is represented by his counsel, Chief Afe Babalola, SAN. The Human Rights Violation Investigation Commission was created by Olushegun Obasanjo in 1999. Its mandate was to investigate human rights during the period of military rule from 1984 to 1999. In terms of reconciliation, the Commission also worked towards unifying communities previously in conflict. The Commission submitted its final report to President Obasanjo in 2002, but the government has not taken any action to date. Beko Ransom Kuti died from complications of lung cancer on 10th February 2006, aged 65, at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Idiaraba, Lagos, Nigeria. The state government honored him with a statue in 2010, and the park, the Beko Ransom Kuti Park, was named in his honor. All right. Falana. On that note, I'd like to wish everyone a happy new month 
uh, prosperous Christmas in advance. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share our channel, and drop us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. My learned friend, the gifts is presumptuous. May I defy? Hi. Do you solemnly swear that the evidence I shall give before this honorable commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God. Now, I usually give the witness an option to sit if he likes or to stand. So you are at liberty to sit or to stand? I will stand. Your Excellency, you were the head of state, commander-in-chief of the armed forces, as well as the minister of defense of the Federal Republic of Nigeria between February 1976 and September 1979. Is that correct? Sir? Yes, you are right. Thank you. I haven't read the petition of the Kuti family before this August Commission. Can you recall the events of the 17th of February 1977 as related to the incident on which, on the basis of which this petition was written? No. Okay. Now, Mr. President, on that day, if I may refresh Your Excellency's memory, the members of the Security Council, of which you were the chairman, held a security meeting. Can you recall that, sir? No. It is the member of Federal Executive Council that met that day. That met. Very good. No security council. Very good. Now, a report was said to have been made while that meeting was holding that Fela was at it again. Can you recall that? I cannot. Okay. Uh, please show Mr. President the petition of Dr. Berkora Samkuti, please. Is that exhibit Pat one? Yes, sir, the advertorial. The advertorial. That's appendix four. Appendix four. That is the advertorial. By Major H.H. H. Jokolo. Page 31. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Now, that is an advertorial by one Major M. H. Jokolo, retired. Mm -hmm. Does Your Excellency know Major Jokolo? Yes, I do. Uh, I'll be correct in suggesting that uh, he's the present Emir of Gwandu. Is that correct? Yes, you are correct. Now, by 1977, sir, will you know the position he was holding? He was ADC to... Um, Major General Sheikh Yaradwa, ADC, ADC. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. Now, in an advertorial placed by him in the Citizen Magazine of November 9, 1992, he had this to say, that is at page 41 to 42 of that magazine, mm -hmm. To the fact, sir, mm. that a meeting of the Security Council was holding on that day, and that while that meeting was holding, 
General Dajuma stormed out of that meeting to give this instruction. Go get me that stupid fella, dead or alive. He went back to their meeting. That is the meeting he alleged you were presiding over. His orders were clear but directed at actually none in particular. That's among the ADCs. We all look at each other in stunning silence. I made the first move by volunteering to go. The ADC to Commander-in-Chief, that is Your Excellency's ADC at the material time, stated that I should not go because I could easily be recognized. So the ADC to Brigadier Garba, who also was his younger brother, Lieutenant Sunday Garba, was directed to take his platoon from Brigade of Gas Def Defense Company to go and get fella. Sunday narrated to us what happened when he came back. He told us that on getting to Fela's house, it was locked and electrified. He shouted for Fela to come out, but was ignored. They got Nepal to switch off the light, but Fela switched on his generator. So the only course open for them was to blast the generator to gain access into the house. When they entered Fela's house, they ransacked the place and beat up everybody, including Fela, Fela's old mother, who was thrown out of the window. They were all arrested. We congratulated him for successfully accomplishing his mission. He went on, sir. Some days later, there was a public uproar, and people were so disgusted with the way Fela, his mother, younger brother Beko, and his troop were brutalized and his house vandalized. They asked for a judicial commission of inquiry. Rather, a two-man administrative commission of inquiry was set up with clear mandate to pass the verdict of a known soldier and Fela's property was confiscated. He was to be compensated, though it was believed he would never agree to that. And so on and so forth. Sir. Now, what is your reaction, sir? Uh, to this detail, just a minute. To this detail account of one of your uh, offices. Excuse, excuse me, please. Mm. I hate a cancer. Reading document and leaving that part which does not favor him. Please uh, uh, ask him to continue uh, for the down. next few pages where they said General Bank of Basso John knew nothing about it. Read no, it out no. in the same document. No. It's the same document. Mm. I'm coming down. Uh, no, my, no, no, but, my lord, sir. If my learned friend, if I will allow me to finish. Please. Please. I'm in no. charge of this, yeah. of my own case. Sir. Yeah. And I can well, assure you are, him. You are, you are I, in charge of your case and you want an, an answer. No, I, just yeah, an answer. This is so detailed. First of all, with all due respect, knowing General Yakubu Danjuma, who was the chief of staff, army, he will not just go out if that is the case and just shout to people, to nobody, and say, go and get me that bloody man, fella dead or alive. That is not, so it is not Yakubu true, Danjuma. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Please, no. please, please, please. But if you believe that Yakubu Danjuma said that, he did not say that because anybody gave him that instruction. Thank you very much. But he's alive and you can find out from him. Thank you very much. Now let me go on again. You said that Jokolo even gave you chapters and verses. The names he mentioned are alive. I think if, if you want to find out the fact, my own conclusion will be that this is probably a tissue of fabrications probably a tissue of fabrications. But if you want to find out the fact, call those people. They are alive. And they will tell you. Thank you very much. We've already applied that they be summoned. Uh, now, Mr. President, please listen further. That was how Nigeria's greatest musician was broken until now. He has not recovered. Why fella was ignorantly accusing Obasanjo and Yaradua for perpetrating this dastardly act, the real brain behind it was none other than T.Y. Danjuma. 
I'm sure my learned friend will like that. Fella was lucky. That's the point I was making, sir. Yes. I could have, excuse me. Should I have stopped there? If you invite this head of state to testify, if you find anything favorable to him, it's only fair and professionally right to read it out. The same person who says that you said so so also said in clear language. Jiraba Sojo was being accused ignorantly. So what more? Why is he here then? My Lord, I ask for the permission of the commission to conduct my case. Not the way the SCN will want it. Uh, General. Go ahead. Yes. Now. Thank you very much. Why fella was ignorantly accusing well, I've, I've done that. Surprisingly, Dan Juma, even as COAS, Chief of Army Staff, was frequenting visiting Fela's shrine. What in the world was the big deal about Fela calling his shrine Kalakuta Republic? He was ordered never to mention Kalakuta Republic. Now, Mr. President, are you aware that apart from the soldiers from Abati Barracks, soldiers from the Brigade of Guards, also took part in the operation that led to the destruction of Fela's house on that day. I wouldn't know. Now, after look at, after look at the report, please. That was tendered this morning, the Kalakuta report. Page thirty-six. Paragraph 13, sir. The first two sentences there. At about 7.20 hours, an IS platoon from the Brigade of Gas arrived at the scene of the incident via Central Vehicle Depot through Camp 4 Infantry Division Gate, where they met the garrison command, who briefed, commander, I guess, who briefed their PL command about the situation categorically stating the troops, stating that troops would not be necessary for them to open fire, but to reinforce the condoni troops around Fela's residence. If you also go to page 40, Mr. President, mm -hmm. of that report, mm -hmm. can you see that, sir? Yes. It is also there, paragraph 11. Mm -hmm. By 7.20 hours, a platoon of body of gas troops, led by Lieutenant, met me near the scene and brief, I briefed them of the situation, warning them not to fire since we have armed troops dealing with the situation and also some police and soldiers making arrests from room to room inside Fela's residence. With this report, Mr. President, which has been tendered by your learned, uh, the learned senior advocate this morning, mm -hmm. you will agree with me that apart from soldiers from a battery record, mm -hmm. uh, barracks, mm -hmm. soldiers from the Brigade of Grass also took part in the operation around Fela's house died in, from the record? Well, what normally happens is when you have what we call an IS situation, you, that is internal security, you have special uh, troops detailed from special units, and they have their responsibilities. And um, the troop from uh, 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 um, uh, build, uh, brigade of guards going out at 17:20 hours, hours on an event that started or began at what time? In huh? the afternoon. About at what time? At what time? About one o'clock. At one o'clock. They were all amassing. You see that uh, it cannot be really a part of the what you call the operation. Yes. It is the normal IS standard operation. 
So your excellency does not agree with the finding of the administrative inquiry that soldiers from the Brigade of Gas took part in that operation? No, I do not say, I say soldiers from Brigade of Guards did not take part because this, the, what you call taking part had already happened. Yes. But you, when you have a situation of IS, you have how the military operate. And then the soldiers that went out from Brigade of Guards are meant to do what we call showing the flag. Thank you very much. Now, the, the point I'm making, Mr. President, is that there is this allegation by Jokolo that an ADC Garba got instructions from General Danjuma and came down to Agege Motor Road all the way from Dodon Barracks, moved the Brigade of Gas down, and he is alleging that the Brigade of Gas took part. This has been confirmed by the Kanluanya report. Because it took several hours. The attempt to arrest, to invade the house, the burning of the house, the arrest of 55 people according to the report. And if many of them were taken to different army barracks, who so are, the operation who, took who, hours. Who are they arrested by? They were arrested by soldiers and members of the police who were around. Okay. Yes. And according to this report, yes. the soldiers of Abalti barracks and the police even when the soldiers from Brigade of Guard Came got there, yes. who were on show of flag, yes. they were told not to participate. That is what this That they should is stand by you know, and watch development. In other words, by showing of flag, yes. they took part in the operation. Okay, yes, yes was if, if, if that is what you want to say, yes, they took part in the operation yes, sir. to the extent that they show a uh, show of uh, flag is part of operation. Thank you, sir. Yes, if yes. Um, uh, they, they, they have gone out, yes, they should, uh, to that extent, you can say they, should, uh, they took part in the operation. Th thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now, the federal military government headed by your excellency at the material time mm. did ask the Lagos state government to investigate this incident mm -hmm. is that correct sir? no that's um, Lagos state government does that uh, normally okay, sir. Um, normally when there is uh, a situation in the state um, it depends whether the inquiry will be done by the federal or by the state, state. Yes. Yeah. And Bef in this case, it's done by the state. Yes. Before this particular incident, mm. army civilian clashes at Ugeb, Kano, Oshudi, and other places mm. were normally investigated by the federal go military government. Uh, can, you lose, can your excellency recall? Huh? No, no, that's what I've just told you. Yeah. It depends. Yeah. There is no hard and fast rule about it. Very good. Mm. Now, in this particular instance, the report did say that the house and all the violations that took place that day were perpetrated by an unknown soldier. Yes. Is, are you aware, sir? Well, if you cannot identify a soldier, then it's an, to the man who is writing the report. is unknown. Very good, sir. And it's uh, a soldier that you can identify that is known. Thank you very much. Now, uh, the distinguished senior advocate attended the judgment of the Supreme Court this morning. Uh, and I just want to read page 21 of that report to you. And this is by the Honorable Justice Kyle Desha, who read the lead judgment. I have is shared that the majority judgment or minority no, it judgment? It was unanimous, sir. Okay. All right. all right. I have shared all our constitutions prior to 1979, and regrettably, I'm not able to find any provision which one could apply, even remotely, but rightly, in an annulment of this doctrine. The court is to administer law as it is, and not as it ought to be. This immunity attaching to the state 
in this country is bad. For the learned trial judge who took evidence described the scene that day as hell let loose. And this he had set out in his analysis of the evidence. Said he, he said, it is beyond dispute, of course, that many soldiers, a witness gave the figure of 1,000, surrounded the entire buildings, hauling stones, and broken bottles. Many of them got inside the building, set fire to it, as well as the generator in the compound. Unquote. Esher continued. This is bad. It should not be right that once the actual perpetrators could not be determined, the state whose soldiers these perpetrators are could not be made liable. Now, to your knowledge, Mr. President, was any soldier made liable for the violation for the activity that took place on that day? To your knowledge, Mr. President. The soldiers were taken to court. And you took them to court because you want to make them liable. Thank you, Mr. President. Should, there, should there be double punishment? No, sir. Now, okay. Mr. President, what happened to them? Well, I should ask you what happened to them in court. Well, uh, Mr. President, you are not in a position to ask me questions. You are well, you I answer my own questions. Yeah, well, I'm asking, I'm, asking your, I'm answering your question by asking you no, questions. Hold it. No. I think... He's saying that what happened in court is yes. a notorious fact. No, I'm asking of... What, what happened to them means what happened to them in court. No, to the soldiers. In court. Yes. They were taken to court. They were, they were taken, taken to court. What happened, you should know, because the reports are there. No, sir. I am say, I'm suggesting, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the witness. If he doesn't know, he, he will say no, he no, doesn't no, no. know. There are certain things but you don't I think need to be allowed. It. There are certain things you don't need evidence. One is notorious facts. Okay. Two is something that is already in court. I take the with hint. The uh, report is there. I take the hint. So you should know. I take the hint. Mr. President, you will agree with me that none of the soldiers, none, was punished for his role in that incident because they were simply described as unknown soldiers. Well, if you take them because you must be able to have been able to identify them and identify their role, that's why you have taken them to court. And if you have taken them to court, and the court, the law and the uh, process takes its uh, uh, um, uh, course, then what else do you want me to do? Thank you very much. The court, Mr. President, from the evidence before this tribunal, did not say that the perpetrators should not be punished. What the court did say was that they were acting for the king and that the king can do no wrong. Not that they did not commit tortious acts. In other words, the court has found that these were agents of the state under the doctrine of immunity attaching to the state at the material time. We cannot punish them. I'm asking Mr. President, apart from fellas suing them by taking them to court, did the military authorities, headed by your excellency, bring any of the soldiers to book? That will not be done by me as Minister of Defense. Thank you very much. It will be done by the unit commanders. Are you aware if this was done by the brigade commander, Mr. President? They don't have to report that to me. Uh, please listen to what my Lord Justice Oputa said in that judgment. This is but a vestige, a bait colonial, of the ancient legal fiction expressed in the maxim, Rex non potes pecare, the king can do no wrong. Thus, King Manelus of Sparta was able to say, when a king takes spoils, he robs no one. When a king kills, he commits no murder. He only fulfills justice, end of quote. The position in England has radically changed since 1948. The Crown Proceedings Act of 1947, which came into force on 1st January 1948, the Crown can 
now be sued in England for the talk of his servants. Mr. President, the king at the material time of the state at the material time was your excellency. If that was the law, that was the law. I Thank did not much. make the law. Thank you very much. All right? Thank you. And today, if I believe that the king never can never do wrong, I wouldn't be here. Thank you very much, Mr. All President. Right. Thank you very much. Mr. President, have a look at... So, uh, and I believe that law is dynamic. I agree with you. If in 19... Uh, what year are we 1977. Talking? If in 1977 there are parts of our law that colonial then today maybe we need to amend them if we haven't amended them. In fact, Mr. President, I want to, at this juncture, commend your excellence for setting up this commission of inquiry. Which I don't need to I to don't need to be commended. Which now you do your job. <laughs> now I am doing my job as I believe I should do it. Thank you very much. Do yours as you should Thank do. Thank you very much. It. All right. That's what I'm doing, Mr. Yes. President. Okay. That's what I'm doing. Go on doing I'm yours. Acknowledging the fact that in spite of the immunity attached to the state at the material time, opportunities, opportunities have been made available to Nigerians through the government headed by Your Excellency to bring petitions of this nature. Now, I, I take you to Exhibit 4, again tendered this morning by your solicitor. Please let Mr. President have a look at Exhibit 4. That is a memo from the Lagos State Government. What uh, verse, uh, what um, paragraph? Paragraph for the last uh, one and two, items one and two there. Subject to the satisfactory proof of laws, innocent victims should either be fully compensated or be given a reasonable amount as ex gratia award. By innocent victims, I am referring to residents around 14A Agege Muto Road and passers by like Kayode Sami who lost an eye during the incident. Two. Two. As for the residents of 14A Agege Muto Road, one can easily make a case for compensation in respect of the loss suffered by Dr. Be Kokuti. One will have said the same thing for the result of the image if the findings of the panel have been that the building was set ablaze deliberately. Yes. Uh, Mr. President, that memo was sent to Your Excellency. No. Okay. Uh, maybe it's not correct because that was the impression given earlier. No, then your impression is wrong. No, it wasn't uh, mine. Yeah. Uh, it was. Uh, no. Your Learner can say that. No, that. the Lagos State Memo, uh, Council Memo, is Lagos State Council Memo. Thank you very much. It's not. A, it doesn't come to federal government. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And federal government memo doesn't go to any state. Thank you very much, Mr. President. All right. You want your paper back? Yes. Have it back. <laughs> Mr. President, from the portion you have just read, yeah. it was the view of the Lagos State Government that Dr. Berko and Somkuti and other victims of the atrocity perpetrated that day be compensated. Well, it is also, if that is the view, and Lagos State Government uh, has set up um, a commission of inquiry and it has a white paper on it and a memo on it, then it should implement it. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. President, the, it's in the petition before this Commission of Inquiry that on that day, apart from the several arrests that were made, the burning of Fela's house or the family house, their 77-year-old man at the material time was thrown out of the window and died shortly thereafter. Dr. Belkor and Somkuti lost his clinic and some cars in that incident. Will Your Excellency agree with me that all those who sustain losses on that day be compensated? Or no soja, or no no soja. 
Who by? By the Nigerian state, whose soldiers these perpetrators were, according to the Supreme Court. No, that is not the finding of the inquiry, and that was not what was uh, in the inquiry's report. The if legal state uh, government, uh, in its own uh, memo to its council, wants to do that, it's free to do that. Mr. President, two months after this yes. finding of unknown soldier, yes. the presiding chairman, Justice Kalwanya, was appointed the chief judge of Borno State by the federal military government, headed by Your Excellency. Is that correct? No, normally it will be recommended. Yes, it was recommended to Your Excellency. Yes. And, and it was appointed. Yes, if it is recommended to me, I will have appointed him. Will you agree that it was a compensation for the job well done. I will not agree because, uh, because I will not agree because I wouldn't have been the one that, to that's recommend him. That's uh, an insult uh, to the judiciary. And well, yes, person. and I, I, I will want to say that not only to the judiciary but also to me. And I will not please uh, uh, your the honourable commissioner uh, commission. I will not stand here and be insulted because if you say that, then you say that I'm bribing. And I will not take kindly to that. M Mr. President. And please, please, and Honorable Commission, if you cannot give defense that I believe is necessary, then, then I will have to reconsider my stand in this witness box. I right. will not subject myself to be insulted, no matter by who. Mr. President, you have already answered the question. We, we don't need my lord i have the right to ask the question no, 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 if no, your no. lordship my lord i have said earlier Le by way of preamble that i would not be stand here and allow scandalous annoying and insulting <coughs> question to be asked now, of my witness uh, let, let me I help so, let, let me help uh, let me just clear a point in fact I happen to know as a fact that the government uh, that silence. appointed, excuse me. Please, just be quiet and listen to the witnesses, please. Yes. Thank you. I just want to clear the point. I think to the best of my knowledge, I practice in my degree, and it was the government of Mohamed Goni that appointed Carlo Anya, I think, as the chief judge of Bono State. That I know. No, sir. It was uh, the government of Mohamed Goni that removed him to the House of Assembly. And just a minute, sir. No. When he was dismissed, when he was dismissed, he filed an action challenging his dismissal and put it before himself and made an order that his removal was illegal. I, I was a party to the action. Thank you very much. But he was appointed by Mohamed Goni as chief judge of Bono State. Well, I, well, I think we have our own facts that are different okay. from yours. But you will also agree with me that he was appointed at that time. But the president has already said he will not bribe anybody. And I think we'll leave it at that. No, I don't think... No, we'll I, I said, it. now, I think what I said must be right, and you must quote me right. I said, if I have appointed him, he will have been recommended. Because how many people did I appoint that I will remember now? So if I have re appointed him, he will have been recommended. And on based on the recommendation, I appointed him. Now, if I have appointed him, but here you are getting somebody who say it may not have even been me who appointed him. My, but my Lord, this is word against yours. My Lord, sir, they, there is a more fundamental issue. And cancer generally, sir, do not take notice of this important point in whether, whether we are before a, a tribunal or before a trial court, sir. It is this, sir, that a cancer must have firm ground, truthful ground, for any question is asked. And that's why the Evidence Act went on, sir, to say that where counsel asks a question which he knows he has no basis for, it should be reported to the Attorney General. Very few people ever do this. But as an author on Evidence Act, I will tell you what it is. Sir. If, sir, the cause the opinion that any such question was asked without reasonable grounds. It may, if it was asked by any legal practitioner, report 
the circumstances of the case of the AG or the authority to which such legal practitioner is subject in the sense of his profession. In other words, uh, you come and ask a question, sir, about a matter, the basis of you don't know. And Lord, your lordship is reading, sir. I don't know whether your lordship is with me. Go on, I'm listening to you. The, 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 uh, the Honorable Commissioner on your right, sir, has now given the factual basis for that appointment. In other words, that question was asked without factual basis. It's not done. It's not right. And I would demand that my learned friend should not only withdraw that question and apologize to His Excellency. But you admit that you sh should have raised an objection. And then we ruled. You didn't. I had to do it without your objection. I said the question was in bad taste. And there are limits. He said this cross examination. There are limits to cross examination. I hope. Mr. Fallon admits that there are limits to cross-examination. I agree with your lesson. Exactly. I it's only when you are cross-examining as to credit that the sky is the limit. As, as your so if you do, the facts on which you base the allegation, where are they? My Lord. Speculation. My Lord. So one thing let's move forward. My Lord, perhaps more let's than... Let's move forward. My Lord, I think it's nice for me to intervene, sir, to clarify... That Why I ask did. the question? No, I did not set up that. That he was rewarded because... My Lord, I am I'm going to get the facts surrounding that appointment, the time of the appointment. Did you hear that he was recommended? I've, I've, it was a man who recommended him that you would ask. I have agreed with that when Mr. President gave that answer, sir. And I am saying that if I come to facts other than the one I've suggested to the President, Different from the one I've suggested, I will apologize appropriately. That's what I'm saying. Mr. President, sir, your excellency had cause to enact the land use decree. Yes. yes sir, now, that has nothing to do, that got to do with the uh, Felas case. Let, let me just lay the basis. No, 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 no. no. What has that got to do with I'm it? I'm coming to that, sir. It, my learned friend has now helped me by objecting at, at, at the right time. Now, Fellas House was acquired okay. compulsorily. Under the land use decree. And well, under the land use decree, because we had the land use decree in, uh, at the material time. By legal state government. My, my Lord. By the president. By the, f by the government of Lagos State, which was a part of the federal military government. It was a unitary system, sir. Now you are wrong. We have, since, since uh, the time of. Uh, Eronsi, we have not run a unitary system of government in this country. We have not run a unitary system of government in this country after Eronsi. Mr. President, I'm not even sure Chief Abalala will agree with you on that point, Your Excellency. But that is politics, which I won't go into. But I, I just want to suggest, Mr. President, that the Kuti family lost everything including their land the house forget whether we are talking of a new soldier or not mr president don't you think they deserve to be compensated as it is always done in all cases where the landed properties of anybody have been acquired well, that is between the Kuti family and, the, and those who acquire the fam and those who acquire the land. Thank you, Mr. President. Pardon? That's Pardon? I said thank you, Mr. President. Yes. That is all for this witness. Thank you. Any re-examination? Any re-examination? <laughs> oh, was your client mentioned? My Lord shot me out of the no, 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 no. We agreed before we started that we already cross examined uh, Beko, the petitioner. That was, that was not my understanding, my Lord. And with the greatest. Well, if you tell me what was said in the petition that connects the witness, then I will allow to cross examine him. But if you just open wide every other, because we were here when I read out that cross-examination should be limited to issues arising from the petition. So if you point out to me the issue on which you want to cross-examine, of course you will. 
that relate to your client. I, I, I'm surprised my lord is... Don't be surprised. That's what we agreed and I read it no, out this lord, morning. My agreement was that I have cross-examined uh, Dr. Beko Ransom Kuti. With the greatest respect, my lord, human rights abusing is not an abstract matter. My lord, the good don't make speeches. Don't make speeches. No. Show me the portion of the petition that relates to your client, which he can throw light on. Then we allow you to cross-examine. But not just in the air. Well, uh, my lord, I will take the hint that I will not be heard. With the greatest respect. Sorry, I mean, let me just, I mean, as a, as a layman, the issue here, when you cross-examine the, the allegations made by the petitioner are in relation to what Zachary Bill did to him. So if you want Dr. Beko back in the witness box, I think that's what you should do. My Lord, I stand guided and I wish you well. That's what I'm saying. I'm no, not no, no, going no, to cross-examine. No, 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 listen. No, no my, Lord, Lord, my Lord, it appears, it appears that at this stage of our uh, hearing, we appear to take human rights violation as an abstract matter. It is not. It is connected with several other issues. If this incident had not happened, maybe Be uh, Beko will not have mentioned the name of Zachary Biu to be no, here. But the point and I'm my making, Lord knew that the point Zachary I'm Biu making. himself testified in this matter. No, and but, no, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is I doubt that SCP Zachary was SCP in 1977. Yes. And pardon, he was. He wasn't. He wasn't so, SCP Zachary Biu. That's why we're saying that the issues, the petition that is before us today is the petition submitted by, 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 by Dr. Kuti. Yes. Now, your client was mentioned by Dr. Kuti in relation to what he allegedly did to him. And I'm say I'm just saying, unless I mean, if you can convince us, that was fine. But I'm saying, I have if taken in, the as far as I said, I will not cross-examine. Yes. That is all, my lord. If that is okay. Mm. So that should be May I please, my yes. lord, and honourable members of the commission, I'm not actually asking any question, but my lord, I'm taking solace in the spirit of this commission and what my Lord has said earlier when I made the observation in relation to another petition in which Mr. President is interested. My Lord, I did say on that occasion that we did not have the opportunity to controvert the evidence of Mr. President, not because of our fault, but because we were not served. My Lord, if justice is to be done, if all the wounds are to be healed, if there should be fairness, my Lord, and if misconceptions are to be doused, my Lord, I will crave your Lordship indulgence, not that, I mean, in relation to petition 654 of Gwenga Obasanjo, as it relates to my client. If your lordship that has the power to say that Mr. President should answer our questions on that petition now or at any other time, my lord, I'll be grateful. That is my request, my lord. With your permission, sir, may I say something about that, sir? I think there's a gross misconception as to the issue that arose in Benga's petition and the issue is raising, sir. It was true as this presided, but the issue we were raising there was that the evidence led in that tribunal where he was convicted was based primarily on the evidence of one, what's the name now? Uh, fa Bail of Fadile. Fa fa Fadile. And that Fadile would not have done so, but for the fact that he was under undue influence and so on and so forth. He came here to say, my evidence was false. Whether Azizi would have come to this, a different decision or not, it's, not, it's immaterial now that 
We said he gave a wrong decision. That's not the issue, sir. It is that there was no factual basis for his conviction because the man who on whom have I got jurisdiction to listen to another Party petition sir. when I'm hearing one petition? Uh, no, that's it's another not before me. Uh, I don't want your lawsuit to even petition is not before all. me. But they are not giving it all sort of horrible interpretation. It's not before me. When it is before me, then I'll hear it. What is before me is Beko Rans and Kuti's petition. With, with greatest respect, my lord. In fact, all we are saying, if my learned uh, essay is saying that we will never have the opportunity of putting our case, so be it. Let it be heard. In fact, that is what he's saying. He's saying that their case was based on the evidence of Fadile, and uh, we are now being told that we cannot even cross-examine because one, I have, I have obtained the transcript of the evidence of Benga, and one of, yes, my Lord, I have. I know it's not in this petition. All Thank I was you. asking is whether we will ever have the opportunity. I, but if we I, will I not thought, have it, my Lord, I, I will mean, bow. This is not a matter we ought to disclose here. But I thought in confidence you met us in chamber. We discussed this matter. We thought we have rested the matter there. As your Lordship, please. Yes, you know. My Lord, since this is our own petition. I still say I don't know what the bar is becoming. If members of the bar met a judge in chambers and discuss, that should have been the end of it. As a copy. But I don't know what we have now as a bar. My Lord, we are finished with the witness, sir. We are not connected with Assisa or... <laughs> any... Well, any you want to ask any questions? Counsel for the Commission? Yes. As it refers to the petition of Ransom Kuti. Just two, my Lord. Hmm? Just two questions. All right. Your Excellency, Dr. Ransom Kuti, um, and during his testimony before the Commission, stated that, um, well, if I may quote him, that um, um, after um, the death of his mother, which he says was as a result of the fact that she was thrown downstairs um, when Kalakuta Republic was set on fire by the soldiers, allegedly set on fire by the soldiers. He said, despite General Bassanjo's insistence on justice, he did not submit himself to justice following that incident. Uh, the, my question is, were you ever required by anybody to submit yourself to any kind of justice following that incident? Well, this is the first time that I will be called upon and um, haven't been called upon now. I'm here. Well, I don't know what other justice, but I want to. Say, I want to say that those who ask for justice must not do injustice to others, because that is uh, always the case, and we have seen this particularly in this particular case. Thank right. you very much, sir. The petitioner also stated uh, in the course of his testimony that what Nigeria, this may be a bit extraneous, but it was, it's in evidence before the commission, that what Nigeria has now is civil rule and not democracy. Would you like to react to that assertion? Well, you know, everybody defines things the way he likes. For instance, if you ask Beko to define God, even though he is the son of a reverend gentleman, he will define God differently from the way I would define God. That is his own way of defining God. So I don't think you should worry about that. What we have here in this country is democracy. So if to him is civil rule, so be it. Um, but everybody knows that we have democracy. In fact, democracy that is being acclaimed all over the world. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. My Lord, that will be all for the week. Re-examined, if any. My Lord, and all honorable members of the uh, tribunal, we thank you for giving His Excellency this opportunity. I think he... No re-examination? Yes, yeah, there is none. I'm only saying... 
that we thank you, sir. And I think the president has something to say in addition, sir. Yes, that's what we are discussing on this side. Uh, Your Excellency, we are asking whether you are disposed to tell us anything. We are allowed to roam at large from this side. They are not allowed from the bar. If there's anything you want to tell or to give us or to testify to, to help the Commission to achieve the desired end, that is with reference to attempts of reference, we we'll gladly receive that evidence. Well, Honorable Commission, and my Lord, I just want to reiterate that for me, and I believe for many Nigerians, this commission is a serious commission established to do a serious job of establishing truth and forging reconciliation. It is not a commission to review the findings of past commissions of inquiry or, or neither is it a higher appellate court. This commission must never, never, I repeat never, allow itself to be trivialized away from the purpose for which it is established. And that is, I repeat, to establish truth, secure remorse, and forge reconciliation and forgiveness as basis for peace and unity in our country. Your task is both a monumental one and in a way one can even say a divine one. And all I can say is that God Almighty may be with you and direct you as you confront this onerous task. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. You are not discharged. <laughs>